job as a fireman was to react calmly. But what I saw last night scared me so much. The Trump Prophecy movie is the story of former firefighter Mark Taylor, who says he received a special message from God in 2011 that then businessman Donald Trump was headed for the White House. Producer Rick Eldridge says he wasn't sure he wanted to do the film. I knew it was going to be controversial. I knew it was not going to be an easy movie to make. But uh, I also knew that we had a nation that, that really needed to hear some messages of, of God's intervention in our country. The movie relives the night. Mark Taylor received what he calls the commander in chief prophecy. I didn't know a lot about Donald Trump. Um, I just knew he was a very powerful businessman, had a, built this empire. So I'm listening to him on an interview and all of a sudden I just heard the voice of the Lord say, you're hearing the voice of a president. Mark went into his office, got out a pen and paper and started to write what he says the Holy Spirit told him. He was saying that basically that America was going to prosper like never before. Um, Israel and America, the ties between the two countries would be stronger than ever before. Uh, the dollar would be the strongest it was ever been. It was very detailed as far as what God was showing me. Chris Nelson, an actor and film professor at Liberty University, played the part of Taylor. People will hear the title and they think it's all about Trump. It's really about a common man hearing from the Lord and being given wisdom and advice from you know fellow believers to pray about that. One of those believers was Mary Colbert, wife of Dr. Don Colbert, who was treating Mark for an illness. After hearing Mark's prophecy, she started a nationwide prayer movement for the presidential election, a movement that became a key part of the movie. There's a mandate for us as believers to pray for those in authority over us. And so that's a deeper message that we really emphasize in the movie. Nelson says most people were just reacting to the T word. They get squirmy when they hear the words Trump and God together <laughs> yeah. because they they think that somehow it's lessening, I think, who God is by even mentioning his name with Trump. And I think, well, goodness, aren't we all glad that that's not how we feel about ourselves? Despite the controversy, Eldridge believes this movie needed to be made. We have such a divided nation right now, so I hope this film in some way can be maybe uh, a point toward healing. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. And I don't think he came to be president uh, by mistake or by happenstance. I think somehow God put him in this position because he's not a politician. He seemed to do everything wrong as a politician. He offended many people, did the wrong things, but somehow he became president. And I just have to think that God, in some reason, put him there for, for a purpose. I don't know what that is, but we need to get behind him and support him.
among those freedoms is the right to worship according to our own beliefs. That is why I will get rid of and totally destroy the Johnson Amendment and allow our representatives of faith to speak freely and without fear of retribution. I will do that, remember. Who better to ask than Dr. Robert Jeffers, a key Trump supporter who is, of course, pastor of First Dallas Baptist Church and a Fox News contributor. Good evening, sir. Happy birthday, Ed. I appreciate uh, that coming from you. Uh, I want to start off with uh, Pastor Robert Schenck. He recently told NPR the following, quote, I've heard even top-level officials, including members of Congress, call him, the president, insane, crazy, a lunatic, but he's our lunatic, and he's going to help us achieve our objectives, and they're willing to make that deal. To me, that equates to selling one's soul. <laughs> well, look, nobody has sold his soul to support President Trump. You know, uh, this is not an unusual thing. We've been here before. Back in 1980, evangelicals chose to support a uh, twice married Hollywood actor who was a known womanizer in Hollywood. His name was Ronald Reagan. They chose to support him over Jimmy Carter, a born again Baptist Sunday school teacher who had been married faithfully to one woman. The reason we supported President Trump, uh, President uh, Reagan was not because we supported uh, womanizing or divorce. We supported his policies. Uh. And that's true here, Ed. We are choosing to support his policies. We're not under any illusion that we were voting for an altar boy when we <laughs> voted for President Trump. <laughs> we knew about his past. And by the way, none of us has a perfect past. We voted for him because of his policies. Many have expressed surprise that evangelicals voted last year in overwhelming numbers for our arguably least religious president. There is no reason for surprise. The religious right has long been not a religion, but an ideology. So you talk about, you know, the president's agenda. Is it really more about ideolo ideology than religion then? Well, uh, certainly. He is the most religious, liberty-oriented president we've ever had. And uh, I think that's why evangelicals continue to support this president at a 75 percent approval rating. It's not that we have sold out at all. Well, it tells me, in spite of all the garbage that's being thrown at this president, he still remains immensely popular. And at the top of the list for that, Ed, is his promises to appoint a conservative judiciary. You've talked about tonight how he's doing mm -hmm. that. That's what we care about. That's what he's doing, and that's why he's going to win re-election in 2020. Pastor Robert Jeffress, undoubtedly getting ready for a Sunday sermon. We appreciate you spending a little time with us on Friday night, sir. Thank you. opponents in this race who do not want to change the Constitution. 
But I believe it's a lot easier to change the Constitution than it would be to change the word of the living God. And that's what we need to do is to amend the Constitution so it's in God's standards rather than try to change God's standards so it lines up with some contemporary view of how we treat each other and how we treat the family. So please, I'm not the type of person that goes, please go out. But I never thought this would be coming out of my mouth. I'm like, I'll never do politics. I'm feeling, please, I'm pleading with you. You know how the Apostle Paul would beseech you? And that's like, hey, I'm beseeching you right now. I, I can't we do it. say more. I mean, and it's like, you see the hand of God in all this. I mean, if you went historically and looked to say, does a pre they, no one expected him to be in. Victorians. Yes, sir the Lord and Donald Trump, we can talk about these things in church That's on right. Sunday morning. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I, I can say to you, vote red, I can say that to you without any fear that the IRS is going to take away your right to donate to this church and deduct it from your taxes. Amen. And without you being audited because of it, that's over. Amen. And that's because our president did that for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hello everybody, I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is Faith for Our Nation. Praise God. Let's have you, you sit still. You sit right where you are. Don't you turn that off saying, well, I ain't going to vote anyway. You're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. And you're going to find that out before this broadcast is over. You're going to be guilty of murder. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. You're going to be guilty for every baby that's aborted from this election forward. And, and so you, you don't wow. cut out on me right now wow. in the name of Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's right. I forgive you, sweetheart, but you just stay right there where you are and hear us out. And then. really be surprised about biblical justification for policies? Last year, it was revealed that the White House is holding weekly Bible study classes. The classes are led by Ralph Drollinger, the founder of Capital Ministries based in Washington, D.C. Capital Ministries has been operating for over two decades, preaching evangelism to elected public servants. Since our founding in 1996, our vision has not changed to evangelize elected officials and lead them toward maturity in Christ. It turns out that the man advising the White House on matters related to the Almighty is a former basketball player with a bachelor's degree in geography. Now, he has no background in public policy or political science, but he does offer his expertise on spiritual matters to those in power. They are so teachable, they're so noble, they're so learned. Like Jeff Sessions, he'll go out the same day I teach him something, I'll see him do it on camera. The list of officials who have participated in Ralph's classes is rather impressive. You've got Vice President Mike Pence. You've got Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos. You've got Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And you've got Energy Secretary Rick Perry. All of them have sat down with Pastor Ralph to learn about the good book. Many Americans are horrified that 
that evangelical ministers are influencing policy and even giving classes in the White House. They think, why are these religious kooks influencing the fate of the free world? But there are Americans who feel the opposite. That's the problem with this country. You people have allowed religion to become a part of political policies. Your religion, I don't care what it is, has no business being in government. It's his prerogative, right? It's his own religion, right? It's a freedom of religion. That's what the country is all based upon, right? Freedom. So it's the President of the United States. He has his rights as well. I believe in separation of church and state. I believe religion should be kept separate from politics. Uh, haven't other presidents done that in the past, too? I mean, if they're religious, then they're allowed to do that as long as it's not interfering with um, actual governing. Trump did come forward and put a stop to the controversial family separation policies. He may have cooled his critics on that, but in the process, he seems to have opened up a new divide, a divide about his administration's newly announced policy of invoking the Bible to justify its decisions. And now, Father, as we come to dedicate this embassy in the city of Jerusalem, the city that you named as the capital of Israel 3,000 years ago, we want to thank you for the tremendous leadership of our great president, Donald J. Trump. Without President Trump's determination, resolve, courage, we would not be here today. And I believe, Father, I speak for every one of us when we say we thank you every day that you have given us a president who boldly stands on the right side of history, but more importantly, stands on the right side of you, O oh God, when it comes to Israel. Shigama. <laughs> You 
put that name in your mouth and the same beings in heaven and the same beings in earth and the same beings under the earth tremble and whether they like it or not it, their old knees begin to get weak and they can't withstand it and they finally fall and confess the Copeland family has authority over me and they have the right to threaten me and I must yield In other words, he's authentically, whether people like it or not, has been raised up by God because God says that he raises up and places all people in places right. of authority. Right. It is God that raises up a king. It is God that sets one yes. down. And so when you fight against the plan of God, you're fighting against the hand of God. We were not sent into this earth to fit in or, 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 or just to, we weren't just sit here to be a part. We were sent here to take over. Right. Are you listening? Wow. I'm trying. That's the church. Oh, that's why we have the president we have. He doesn't fit. Amen. He's not a normal president. Amen. And here's a woman who is from the bottomlands. Yes. But God has raised her up yeah. to the White House. Yeah. to click on that donation button by minimizing the screen. And when you do to sow $1,144, it's not often I ask very specifically, but God has instructed me, and I want you to hear, this isn't for everyone, but this is for someone. When you sow that $1,144 based on John chapter 11, verse 44, I believe for resurrection life. You say, Pastor Paul, I just don't have that. Then sow $144. I, I, I don't have that. So $44. But stand on John chapter 11 verse 44. And when you do, there are prayer cloths that we have anointed, that we have prayed over, that are going to be a point of contact. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible says that Paul had prayed over these prayer cloths and that they brought forth special miracles, signs, and wonders. There have been times I've taken prayer cloths that have been anointed as a point of contact. I've put them in my loved one's sneakers. i put them under their bed. I, I put them on parts of my body that I believe God for healing. And, and when it was the most dire, distressed, absolutely devastating look circumstance, I would stand in faith that that miracle was going to come forth. And I watched God do it. God has never failed. I can sit here and say this. There's not anything in my life that I've prayed according to the word of God that I have not seen God answer. Lord's given us great favor. We don't know quite how this has all happened, except the guys in the house, when we started here 10 years ago, uh, some of them got elected to the Senate. They said, hey, we like the, we like the in-depth Bible studies. Why don't you come to the Senate? Now we have 12 senators in our weekly Bible study. And then all of a sudden, when Trump was elected, I think it was through Pence, we all of a sudden started seeing members from our Senate and House Bible studies being plucked and put into the cabinet. And so we have 11 cabinet members now that uh, many of them are from a, a real in-depth Bible study perspective relative to their own life. And so great things are happening here. 
And uh, I think we're at a watershed moment this week. It's interesting that you would be here praying because uh, I think we might be seeing the top of the bell curve uh, and, and a watershed issue of going down the other side now toward righteousness in our nation without, without an oligarchical Supreme Court that's liberally bent. And uh, actually, Alex Azar, if I could just say this anecdotally before I leave you, um, who's the new HHS secretary, he's really good friends with uh, Justice Kavanaugh. And he says, when Justice Kavanaugh gets appointed, either we'll have him here to the cabinet Bible study or he'll want to start one in SCOTUS. So pray that that would happen of all places at the Supreme Court. When God spoke to Israel and he, the promise that he made in Isaiah wasn't that he would restore the king. It wasn't that he would restore uh, some other aspect. What did he say he would restore? What was his promise to Israel? I will restore to you the judges, the judges as at the first. Judges of righteousness, judges that will be, uh, that will judge according to the word of God. are 50, the nays are 48, the nomination of Brett M. Kavanaugh of Maryland to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States is confirmed. Saturday was the best day in American politics since World War II. I repeat, Saturday was the best day in American politics. I'm not saying it's the best day in American history or the best day for whatever, but it was the best day in American politics since the end of World War II. And I explained that in the column uh, and, you know, there's a lot to celebrate here if you're a Brett Kavanaugh fan, as, as I am, as, as we are. You know, and he was confirmed to the Supreme Court on Saturday despite a campaign against him that was vicious and it was cruel and it was slanderous. I believe the demons of hell under Satan's direction threw every single piece of weaponry, every single piece of firepower that they had, threw it into this battle to take out Brett Kavanaugh. They wanted him not just defeated, they wanted him destroyed. I believe it represented a victory of Jesus Christ over Satan and the powers of darkness and evil in the unseen world. And I believe, thanks to the faithful, committed saints who released the power of God against the powers of darkness, through focused and persistent prayer, victory was seized, victory was snatched out of the jaws of defeat.